Well, hello, everybody. Sorry about the delay. Uh, Facebook was being a little cantankerous. I would assume that uh, with lots of people doing Facebook Lives and broadcasting and all sorts of things, bandwidth can be a problem and lots of things, especially uh, on free services like Facebook. So I'm glad to be with you today. Uh, again, I'm Wally with Darkroom Software, and this is a, a series of... Uh, uh, workshops that we're doing while everybody's quarantined off with the coronavirus issue. Uh, I hope everybody's staying safe, staying inside, and do some social distancing. But in the process, uh, let's take a few minutes to, to learn something new. Now, this particular uh, segment of the workshop is going to be a Darkroom Booth 3 Advanced Part 2. I did Part 1 yesterday. Uh, that's available on Facebook. All of these are available uh, afterwards on Facebook in the Darkroom Facebook page under videos. If you want to watch them, they'll also be available on our YouTube channel. Um, so uh, the, the advantage of YouTube is they're a little bit higher resolution, so you might can see finer details better on the screen. But uh, anyway, that's uh, all available for you to watch anytime afterwards. But here we are live. So today I'm coming to you again from our offices in uh, Plano, Texas. And uh, I'm safely tucked away in my office with the door closed. So uh, doing some social distancing here as well. So let's get started. The first topic we're going to talk about is GIF and Boomerang. So let me switch over to my main display. Uh, this is Darkroom Booth in the Output tab. And this is a... a a setup that I've done, a demo I've done, for uh, showing people how to do both GIF and Boomerang. Now it's going to be mostly just uh, screenshots and things because I don't have uh, space and everything to set up lights and, and all the things to do an actual booth and show you a demo that way, but I can show you how the process works. So in Darkroom Booth 3 there are two different types of animations. Uh, a lot of these terms that get thrown around, GIF and Boomerang and uh, Burst Mode and all those kinds of things, I want to kind of explain a little bit of those things to you so that you can completely understand uh, what they mean. But first of all, GIF is a file format. It stands for Graphic Interchange Format, and it's a, uh, a little repeating, jerky sort of uh, animation that's been around for many years. And there's a couple of problems with GIF format. Uh, one of those big ones is the uh, the file format is not always accepted by all social medias. So, for example, on uh, Instagram, you can't post a GIF directly. So that's where MP4 comes in. MP4 is a video format. It's uh, newer, although it's not brand new. It's been out for a few years. And it also has uh, some advantages in color gamut and um, just more fluidity and, and everything like that. So it's a superior file format. Uh, but in many cases, what we're actually talking about is an animation, not necessarily a GIF. So people use those terms interchangeably. So uh, Darkroom Booth does two different types of animations. Uh, one of those is uh, what we call a basic standard animation. That's where the software will take three, four pictures that are still photos separated by several seconds intended to be used in a, um, uh, uh, you know, a still format photo strip. But then it will take those same photos and generate a GIF from them or an animation from them. You can do that in two formats. You can do it as an MP4 or you can do it as an MP or as a a GIF, an actual GIF file. The uh, by far the best uh, selection there is generally going to be the MP4 because it's more universally accepted on social media like Instagram. If your uh, customers want to be able to upload that, so if you look right here, let's first of all talk about the standard animation GIF. So to do that, you would set up your booth just like you would normally do for uh, a photo strip. Uh, in this particular case, I've only got a single photo there, but uh, you would get, you know, set it up for three or four photos for a single photo strip. And then in uh, photo email, if you want to email it to them, or if you want to send it by phone or text, however you want to do it, there's a number of different ways to set that up. Uh, but in here, you would come down to enable animations. Okay, so you check that. And if you did nothing more than that, it would just take the three or four photos that are taken for the photo strips, and it would animate those together sort of in a, a GIF or an animation. Uh, no borders, no text, or anything like that. Just the simple photographs and give you an opportunity to email it to the person. But if you click on this button right over here to the right, Settings, 
it opens up a screen where you can add uh, various options to make that a little different. Uh, first of all, you can set several options here. I would recommend you start off and see what sort of uh, differences you get because with different uh, options here, you get different looks. So one of them puts a different template on each uh, anim frame of the animation. One of them would use the same template for all frames. The difference there is the frame itself would animate if you wanted that versus um, just the photos animating. With the uh, frames animating, you would add multiple templates depending on what your final result is going to be. So for example, if you were doing a, uh, an animation where maybe it was for Christmas and you wanted a string of Christmas lights around the photo that would twinkle and blink, then you might have those created with several different um, versions so that the different lights are changing and you would add those all down here so you have multiple templates down here. Then um, the next option here is MP4 or GIF. We explained that to you a little bit earlier. You can also click right here and get an explanation of how that works. Um, but MP4 is going to be the most universal. It's a video format. Um, down below that is the delay between frames. You may want to just play with that and see what you think uh, as far as what your in results are. That's how much time is between each one of the frames, each photo being a frame. So you can adjust that and, and get whatever effect you want there. Um, the default that's in the software was just something that we played around with and thought that looked pretty good. But you can adjust that to your liking. If you think it's too fast or too slow, you can go up or down on that. Enable boomerang right here. This is just a checkbox. And what a boomerang is, sometimes that term is also referred to about animations. But what a boomerang is, it just means it plays backwards. So it would play forward and play backwards. Assuming you have four photos, it would play photo one, two, three, four, and then go backwards. Four, three, two, one. So that's a boomerang. If you uncheck that box and don't offer the boomerang, it'll just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right? So forward and backward or just forward. Now, down below, you can add up to, I don't know, I think there's a limit of 50 templates you could add here to get multiple frames. You can experiment with that and get different effects there. And uh, you can actually do some pretty elaborate um, effects by adding many, many templates there. So to do that, you want to create this particular type of animation on each output type. So if you want to save it to a file, you would do that with the... Um, copy originals, enable it, put all the same settings in there. If you want to text it, you would do that and set it up different ways. This is something that would happen in addition to the still photos. So doing the standard GIF, you would get uh, the regular photos, the regular photo strips, and then you would also get the, uh, the animation sent by email, text, or saved. Uh, you can also upload those to remove, uh, not to, to uh, event gallery. And we'll talk about Event Gallery a little more tomorrow in a, uh, a series. But the uh, Event Gallery right here, you can also do an animation there as well. Um, now, there's a different type of animation. So keep in mind, the standard animation is several photos separated by several seconds. So it would not necessarily be uh, a good choice for something that's fluid and moving. Okay, so for instance, if you were offering people to allow them to throw confetti in the air, well, by the time you get to the second photo, the confetti is going to be on the floor. So with uh, something like that, you might want to use what we call a burst video. So I'm going to show you, first of all, how you set that up. Uh, in, the, in the screen section, I'm going to edit this template. And I've got right up here in the corner this button right here. This is my start button for a burst mode. Now, you might want to put a label or something on it, but I didn't. If you look right here under booth command, it says burst session plus playback. Okay, so if I click on edit, I've got my command option here that I can use the drop down, choose burst session. And if you wanted people to see it after the session, you would check and enable video playback. So what this is going to do, the burst session, it differs from the standard animation in that it's going to record um, a short segment of video, usually around four seconds or so. Then it's going to take and cut out some frames of that video 
and in then it's going to take those different frames and animate those together to produce the animation in that sense. So this is done as a video. It would be better suited for something like a um, a uh, confetti thrown in the air, as I was talking about earlier. So once you get that set to the command, and in this case you have an option you're going to give the customers. They can either do a standard photo or they can do a burst mode. So you get one or the other, unlike the standard GIF where you get both. Okay, does that make sense? All right, I'm going to save that, and I'm going to move on over here and go to our video tab, and this is where you have all the settings. Uh, recording time, like I said, typically three or four seconds. You can play with that and, and see what results you're going to get uh, and how you like the look of it. The capture rate is the number of frames per second captured, so it's lower than a normal video. Uh, normal video would be like... Um, 30 frames a second. This is a uh, capture rate much lower than that. If you're using something like an M50 and you have it set to 120 frames a second, you may need to seriously adjust that down to just a couple of frames because it's capturing a lot more frames a second than a standard video. Standard video captures 30 seconds of uh, frames a second. If you're doing 120, you may want to go down to a capture rate of two or three sec uh, frames per second. Uh, again, Here's a checkbox for a boomerang. That's just playing forward and backward like we've already discussed. Then you have your playback speed. Now, uh, some people say this is too slow. Other people say it's just right. Uh, you can adjust that, play with it, do your, you know, experimenting with it and find out what you like the best. Um, and then you can uh, go with that. Below that, we have uh, maximum width, and maximum height. And uh, with width and height, uh, that's going to be the size of the video. You don't want to go too high. If you get very high, then the file size exceeds the uh, carrier um, limits and won't be able to send directly to text message. With video, I mean, with sending it by email, you don't have quite as much restrictions there, so it's a little more flexible. You can also, if you upload uh, this to uh, Event Gallery, if you're using Event Gallery, there's not hardly any limit there, and people can download it directly to their phone, so you can go with a much higher image quality there uh, and get a much better one. Uh, here you can go with MP4 or GIF. Again, I would stay with MP4, much more universally uh, accepted. Here you can add a simple uh, template that would go around your video, a single template, single frame template, and then you can also add a soundtrack down here. Uh, at the top of the screen, you'll see some other settings. You can add a uh, intro or an outro, so that would be like your logo, a little segment of video with your logo or something on the end of it. Uh, so all of those things add to processing time. So remember, if you're using a very slow processing computer, you may want to not do some intros, out outros, and, and add some things like that. But those are all uh, options that you have available to you. All right, let's move back to the uh, main section here. Oh, and also if you want to display that at the end of the session, either one of those, you would come here to the uh, this, the uh, text tab and check this box for preview GIF, that little box right there. And that lets you preview it at the end of the session. Uh, that's up to you, personal preference, whether you want people to see it or just move on and then they get it on their phone. So that's where you would set that right there. All right, I'm going to move on just a little bit here, and we're going to go back. And this time we're going to talk about uh, contest mode or special winner. It's called in the software. Contest mode was what wound up in the uh, the uh, advertisement for uh, the, the show or the uh, workshop. But we're going to talk about special winner. It's the same feature. Now, what you do with special winner, special winner is an opportunity to do a contest of some kind and have a random winner. Uh, so people, you know, you can just let it pick somebody at random. There are several things you can do there. And so this is how you would set that up. So you'd set up your normal session, whatever you're going to offer, whatever you plan to do. Then click on Special Winner. And at the very top, there's a checkbox for Manual. Now, if you choose Manual, then you can use Booth Control to trigger it yourself when you want it to happen uh, to determine the winner. Uh, that lets you cheat a little bit and pick who you want to win. Uh, if you choose random, then you can set the chances of winning. Okay, now keep in mind, the higher the chances, the the greater time between wins. 
fewer people will win. Uh, but also keep in mind, if you set it to, say, one out of two, that doesn't necessarily mean every other person is going to win. If you think about a coin, um, you know, a, just a heads and tails coin, if you flip that coin, you only have two options, heads or tails. But if you flip that coin, it's very possible that it could land on heads two or three times in a row before it lands on tails. Or it might land on heads and tails alternately. You never know. It's just the odds. The odds are one and two. So that's how the, the random odds and winning work. Now, you can also set the maximum number of wins per hour. You can set the maximum wins per day. So you want to keep in mind what you're giving away, how you want people to, to get that or win that. Because if you have uh, the odds of winning, you know, 10 an hour, <laughs> then uh, and you're giving away a car, that might get really costly. But if you, uh, you know, want to have a maximum of one person where you're only going to have that one car to give away, then you want to set that to just one win per day. Um, the next thing you can do to let people know they won is you can check special winner and you can just type on the screen right here where it would say, hey, you've won, whatever you want it to say. Uh, that's the most basic, simple way to do that. It, was, it would just indicate to the person at the end of the session that they won. The next series down here gives you a lot more flexibility. The first thing you can do is in device control, using device control, you can click there and you can do what I've done here. I've added a video that I've generated that just plays a bell and makes noise and pops up on the screen and I'll show you in just a minute. But that shows that you won. Uh, you could also add in device control the control of a, a fidget to turn on a light, flash a, a, a light or something like that or do whatever you want to do. Confetti cannon, <laughs> you could get crazy with that and make it do whatever you want to do to indicate that winner. Uh, the next thing you could do is you could check here and add a sound effect, uh, like an MP3 or something, where it plays a bell sound or something to let people know they won. Um, you can add a special template here so that people get uh, not the normal printed template they would get, but they'd get some other special template that would have, you know, winner on it or something. You could also... Um, check right here where they get both so so the winner could get a coupon code or something on a secondary template for something special there so you can do a lot of special things there by using that particular option now i'm going to run a session uh let me make sure yeah i've got it set to one and one so we pretty much will have a winner the first time so i'm going to run a session so you can see what it looks like all right uh, here we go. So here's my simulated live view and everything. And so I'm going to start the session. Um, we get a countdown. Three, two, one. Takes the picture. And there, look at there. We have a winner. So you can see it's showing the video. I don't know if you can hear the audio, um, but it's uh, it's playing a uh, a bell sound. And so then it goes back to the session. So you can see you can do that and and do lots of things with the uh, the contest mode uh, by choosing you know how often people win and what they win and something like that. So that could be a real advantage to you for um, doing something you know for say a hot dog day at an auto dealership or something. They could give away something. All right, the next topic we're going to talk about is alternate print. Alternate print is um, it's very powerful, and it allows you to do a lot for your customer and give them a, cho a choice of templates that they can choose from. It's in the main output section, and uh, if you're using a printer like a DNP620 or something that Darkroom has a built-in driver for, you can use different size templates, uh, say a 4 by 6 and a 2 by 6 and we can turn the the particular cut on and off depending on what size template you're doing. So that gives you a lot of flexibility there to offer different size templates. Uh, to set this up, you would click right here. Now this top section right here, we have sometimes people call us with a uh, a uh, support call saying, help, it's, it's, it's printing, you know, every template every time. And so that's what they've done is they've checked that box. So that would be if you wanted to have, say, two templates and they get both of them every time. Uh, most cases, you're not going to want to do that. You're going to want people to choose. Then you have a choice of prompt user to choose at the start of the session or prompt user to choose at the end of the session. The difference between these two sections is if they choose at the uh, beginning of the session, 
there's a couple of things that happen. I'll show you one of them in just a minute. But the photos that are shown to them in the template would be our sample photos. Or you can change those to your own photos if you want to so that it would have actual photos in the templates they're choosing from. If you choose this option to choose at the end of the session, it's going to show the uh, templates with our uh, with the photos that are actually taken in the session. <coughs> Excuse me. A little dry throat there. So it's going to show uh, the templates that are, or the photos that are actually taken with the session. Now you can also put in here a prompt for text you know, where they say, uh, you know, choose your favorite or something like that. Then you can choose your templates down here. Now in this particular example, I have chosen... Uh, pretty much all 2x6 templates and I've got 2x6 set. Uh, if you put in different sizes like a 4x6 and a 2x6, Darkroom would automatically uh, let you uh, do that and then send the correct cut to the printer with a built-in printer driver. So that's, uh, that's what you would do there. You can add up to 50. I don't necessarily recommend that. that that's a lot to allow people to scroll through and choose. But that's, you know, that's something you could certainly do. Now, at the top of the screen, you'll see right up here how many photos per session. Um, if you're using templates with all the same number of photos, it's not a problem. But if you're using templates with different numbers of photos, like, for example, a single photo 4x6 versus a three photo 2x6, you can check this right here and set it to match output. And then Darkroom will take the correct number of photos um, for the template, whatever template they select. They would have to select that at the beginning, though, for Darkroom to know. Another option you can do is uh, you can do the favorite photo. So if you have, say, a single photo 4x6 template and you have a three photo 2x6 template, if you set this to three photos, it would take three photos for the three for the 2x6 template, and then it would let them pick which one they want for the 4x6 template. And the place you do that is down here in the text tab uh, called Photo Selection. So you just check Photo Selection. It will show them that single photo template with each photo in it, and then they can pick their favorite. Um, but in most cases, most people is going to set this to match output, and Darkroom would take whatever photo is necessary. So you can see I've got three templates layered in here. Now, another thing I want to show you that goes along with alternate print, uh, and it's in the screen template, and this is a new feature uh, that's just recently been added in the latest version. If you look at this screen, there you can't really see it too well. It's dotted line around here. I, I don't know how well you can see that. But in the Add up here, if you click Add, and you choose Output, then you define a space on the screen that Darkroom would insert the template chosen as the preview. Okay, did that make sense? So a lot of times people will add photos, like for example, they'll do this right here, and they'll add a photo and put it over here as a preview. Okay, so that as the photos are taken, it'll insert them over there and they can see the photos that are taken as a preview. But using the, the uh, add output, do, I'm going to delete that one. Using the add output now, you can just define an area on the screen. And if you if you see right here, I've got there's a little dotted line. It's kind of hard to see right around there, but a little dotted line that defines that area. Let me see if I move this over. If you can see that any better? Yeah, there you go. So um, on that black, it shows up better. But you can see where I have an area defined where Darkroom is going to insert the selected 2x6 template in that space right there. So if you used, say, a horizontal 4x6 template, it would fit it within this space and it'd be a little smaller. A 2x6 would just about fill that space. So I'm going to get out of this and go back, and we're going to run a session so you can see all that in operation. So I'm going to click right here and start a session. I don't have a printer. Okay, so there's my uh, start screen, and there's that good-looking guy right there in my sample photo. I'm going to click Start Session, and, oh, wait a second. That works better if you turn it on. Oh, I had it set to the end of the session. I'm going to change it to the first. 
Okay, so here we go. There's my uh, simulated live view. I uh, start the session by clicking on the button, and then it pops up and asks me which, uh, you know, which one of these I want to choose from. So let's uh, let's pick that one right there. So you see there, it inserted the preview of that photo, uh, so that as they're taken, it fills in over there, and so then you see the actual template that they choose right there on the screen. Let that cycle through the whole thing and then we'll try a different template the next time around. So there. How about that? Okay. Now I'm going to do another session and choose a different template this time so you can see how that works as well. So if I do that and here's my selector again, I'm going to choose a different template. Wait a minute. It showed the same one. start again okay there we go so it shows that template this time so this output added to the screen lets you show the template that is selected as a preview on the screen and that's a new feature that was just added in the latest latest version okay all right, let that finish, and I'm going to cycle back out of that. Okay, um, next up on our list, we're going to talk about uh, kiosk mode. Um, I touched on that a little bit yesterday, yesterday in uh, Advanced um, 1, but under Booth Control, um, and I'm going to click right here, you can go to... Um, you know, an iPad or an Android tablet or any other computer, just something that's on the same Wi-Fi network, and you would go to this IP address. That's going to vary depending on your uh, network that you're on. Or you can use the uh, QR code if it's an iPad or something to take you directly to it. So if we click Test right here, then it's going to pull this up. This is the menu to get to it. So I'm going to choose Kiosk Mode. Oops, I didn't turn it on. Let me go back. Your slideshow does need to be on. Those uh, are generated in the slideshow. So you do need to have slideshow on. So let's go back to um, global settings and then click test and kiosk. And then you'll see all the images here so let me choose that one right there so this is what the kiosk screen looks like now you can uh, make it go full screen so that you don't see the menu bar uh, that's going to vary depending on your browser in the case of most browsers you just press F11 and it goes full screen if you're using the Android or iPad slightly different um, but down in the bottom section you'd see a uh, icon for email this one is for text this one is for print. It reprints the light, you know, this particular session. You can use this to go back and forth between different uh, sessions. And you can also turn any one of these off. So if you don't want them to be able to reprint, you can turn that off. If you click text, then it pops up and asks them for their phone number. If you click email, it pops up and asks them for their email address. Then they can just put it in. Um, now, I'll be the first to admit there are nicer, fancier kiosk applications out there that cost money. This one's built in. It doesn't cost anything, so that's a great advantage to it right there. It lets you do a quick and easy kiosk-type mode, um, and uh, it doesn't cost anything. So you can exit back out of that. I'm going to show you one other thing that um, is available as well that I think is an excellent feature uh, for someone operating a photo booth, and that's called the uh, Manage Album, this Manage right here. So if you click on Manage, you see what looks like the same screen. But when you choose a photo, you get one more icon down here in the lower left that looks like a trash can. 
Now, if you're uh, even if you're not offering a kiosk for your customers, it's a good idea to have this set up on your phone where you can access it, because invariably someone's going to walk up, even if you're not offering reprints or a kiosk mode. There's going to be somebody that comes up and says, you know, hey, um, that uh, picture in the slideshow is terrible of me, and I just I don't want that scene. So you can go here, you can quickly find it, you can click on the trash can icon and remove it without, uh, you know, allowing, uh, without stopping the flow of the photo booth. You don't have to interrupt the photo booth, it just removes it. doesn't delete it permanently, just removes it from the slideshow. You could also use that for text or, uh, you know, email if someone comes up and says, hey, I text my photo, I never got it. You could just pull out your phone, find it for them right quick and let them send it to themselves again. So that's a good option there. And that's the uh, the kiosk mode. All right, I'm going to exit out of that. And we're going to go on to the next feature that's uh, Photo Note and Doodle. Um, so in Photo Note and Doodle, if you go into the software and you go right in here to the text tab, down toward the bottom, you'll see two different options. One of them is called Photo Note photo signature, actually three options, and then there's review photo with enable photo doodle. So I want to start first of all and talk about the uh, signature. All right. So what you would do to set up signature, now there's uh, signature and doodle are two different features with two different purposes. With the photo signature you define an area on your print template that you want their signature to go think um, a, a baseball card and you want them to autograph it and you want it to be in a certain spot so uh, with the with the photo signature you t you choose the space the the size the location and the color of the temp the pen and they don't get any other choices in those areas uh, but with photo doodle then they can choose a pen, they can choose a pen size, they can write anywhere on the screen. So that's the difference between the two. So now to set that up, let's go back to the output tab and I'm going to show you this particular print template right here. And I've already set this one up with a signature spot. Um, what you would do is you click add or the, if you're using on a horizontal screen you can see an icon down here. But you can click add and choose signature. And it's going to put a box like this on the screen and you can choose the pen color, the pen width, uh, you know, if you want it to be smaller or narrower, the opacity, the background color, various things like that. Now, if you don't want the background color to, to show, you would set the background opacity to zero. Um, so you set all those kinds of things. Those are options that you would set. And then you put that wherever you want their signature to be. So then at the end of the session, it's going to show a box on the screen that they would use their finger on a touch screen or the mouse or a pen if you're you know, doing something with a, a, like a Surface Pro with a pen. And they can write their name there, and then it's going to be inserted there. So you see, you can define how big it's going to be. So you can make it smaller. All right. Now while we're here, I want to show you one other thing. Right up here, I've defined another box, and I've put parentheses, not parentheses, uh, percent sign, photo note, percent sign. What this does is it allows them to type on the keyboard, either on screen or physical keyboard, the um, a note that's going to be inserted there. So you can define how big that's going to be, how much space they have. You can choose word wrap if you're, if you're going to allow them to type very much, like a paragraph or something you want to set word wrap. You can choose the font it'll be in, the color, and uh, and all of that, but you would type photo note uh, percent sign photo note percent sign okay so I'm gonna exit out of that and I'm gonna choose that template and I'm gonna go back here to my text tab and I'm gonna enable both photo note and photo signature okay so now I'm gonna run a session there's my start screen I'm gonna touch the screen to start there's my simulated live view, and it's going to take three photos. There's one. I should probably pick a different picture. Y'all are maybe getting tired of looking at me. And there's two. And there's 
three. Now it's going to pop up and ask me for signature. Now at this point, that's where you would use your finger uh, on a touch screen, uh, the mouse if you don't have a touch screen, or you can use, if, if you have a Surface Pro, you can use the pen if you trust people not to run off with it. But here you would, you know, you can clear it. You can go back and do it again. Not the best signature in the world. Uh, but I'm going to click OK. And then it asks me to add my photo note. So now I can type it on the screen. I'm going to use a physical keyboard. Uh, you can't see my fingers anyway. Uh, so at whatever event you're at. Okay, thank you for inviting us. We had a great time. So whoever can type a little note to you, and then they can uh, click Enter. Now, we're done. The photo prints. It does print that information on the photo strip, so you'd have that information printed on the photo strip. And so I'm going to exit out of that. And I'm going to go right over here to the uh, final section so you can see, you know, what that looks like. So that's what it looks like. You can see my signature down at the bottom and then where I typed in the information. Okay, now then, you can use some of these th features in combination. So, for example, if you if you did the uh, alternate print and you had it print a separate little sized print with the photo note on it and then set it to print both, so they'd get a photo strip and then they'd also get the little... Uh, section that, that would have their note on it that could be put in a, in a book or something. So there's a lot of things you can do with that. But that lets people type a little note and um, and you can see right there, there's my signature and there's the note I typed. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to talk about one more thing. And for this, I'm going to need a little bit of a PowerPoint. So I'm going to open PowerPoint here. So y'all give me just a second to open that. Okay, so what we're going to talk about now, the last thing I want to talk about in this segment is uh, fidgets. All right, so here we go. Fidgets. Now, I want to give you just a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, fidgets involve electricity in many cases. I'm not an electrician. And one of the big reasons we've never really put a lot of information um, about fidgets in our uh, website is because of that fact. It does involve electricity. And so um, I don't want to uh, give you electrical advice on how to wire things up where you're dealing with some cases high voltage and you could electrocute yourself or burn your house down. So this is a big huge disclaimer. I'm not telling you what you do. If you don't know how to do anything with electricity, I would seek out the advice of an electrician nearby. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about fidgets. Now, on the screen right now, you'll see this is a common fidget, and this particular one will work with higher voltages, so AC current, like in your home, up to 240 volts. Now, folks, that's a lot of power. That, that can hurt you. So there's my disclaimer again. Um, this is a model you would use to turn on and off electrical devices, like lights or uh, a fan or something like that, something you would plug in the wall. You can use that to turn this device on and off. Now, it can also turn on lowered power devices like a, a, a battery-powered something. Uh, I'll show you that in just a minute. But this would be, uh, you know, a device that you could turn on uh, something fairly large, uh, you know, a, a fan or something. So um, to start with, I want you to uh, see... Right there. See that little black box right there? There's four of them in a row. That's a relay. That's where it's actually turning the electricity on and off. Now, the white, if you look right here, I think you can see my mouse pointer going around. That is the USB cable that goes back to the computer. 
Okay, so there's a USB cable connected to the computer, and that's how Darkroom is going to control this. So now, if you look right here, this row of green boxes, that's where the wires go in. And on the front of it, it's got three connectors. One of them is the ground, one of them is the normally on, the other one is normally off. So if you want something to be on all the time and you want to just turn it off occasionally or versus, vice versa, that's how that connects up. In most cases, the normally off is what you're going to do and you're just going to turn it on when you need it. Um, but those are the ways where you connect the wires to that. Now, there's four of them here. You can control four different devices in this particular relay. And um, that's the model number. And Fidgets, it's a company. It's PH right here, P-H-I-D-G-E-T-S dot com is the, the company name. And this particular model is 1014 underscore 2. So this would be something you would use for uh, higher voltages like your household current. Uh, again, seek out the advice of a licensed electrician to learn how to wire stuff up like this because I'm not. Um, next, I want to show you how a common way that could be used. If you look right here, there's our fidget right there. I'm pointing to it right there. Uh, over on the left, that black box, that's a 9-volt battery. Okay, so that's just a little 9-volt battery. And then I've got right here, if you look right there, that's a little LED ring. So in this situation, you could turn that LED ring on and off. So you could plug it into the computer and you could use this setup to turn that on and off. For example, if you had the LED ring around your um, camera lens or something like that, you could turn it on and off. That's what that LED ring is right there. I think I got that on Amazon for like 10 bucks. Um, okay, here is a different type fidget. Uh, this one is for low voltage, okay? If you plug this one into high voltage, you're going to burn it up and possibly shock yourself. Um, this one has inputs on one side, that's this row, and it has outputs on the other side. Now this one can be used to power low voltage things like an LED light or something. It pulls the power from the computer, the USB bus. Um, again, talk to an electrician or an electronics expert if you need to help with all of that. I'm primarily just showing you uses that you could use a fidget for. Uh, this is model 1018 underscore 2. Um, so now that I'm going to switch back to the software and I'm going to show you how you could use that. Okay, so here we are in Darkroom and I'm going to go over to the device control section and on the left hand side of the screen you'll see the control panel in Darkroom for device control. On the right hand side right over here you'll see the uh, uh, a webcam that I have set up pointed to the the little fidget in use. Okay, so I want you to see two different things here. Right here, I have a button, just a regular, you know, press button to turn things on. Uh, it's, it's just momentary contact. It stays on as long as you hold it down. You let it off, and it stops. Um, and that's connected to an input. Okay. Now these little red lights right here are just little low voltage uh, LED lights to illustrate a point. And when I click on the software, to uh, you'll see those come on and off. Now in Darkroom, right up here, you'll see the two fidgets listed. I, they're two separate fidgets connected. Um, one of them is uh, set up to turn things on and off, and that's this one right here. And then the other one is set uh, for low voltage things, and it's uh, the one I'm, you see on the webcam. Now down below, you'll see that each one of these, this fidget supports eight inputs and eight outputs. That means you can have eight different switches to turn on different things. Okay, so let's look at the inputs first. You'll see they start with zero for some reason. That's just the way Fidget does it. Um, the inputs, if you look on the webcam part, I'm going to push this button, and you'll, if you look right there, I want you to see that little circle there. I'm going to press this button, and that see how that circle comes on? That's a test showing you that it's working, okay? That just lets you know it's working. When I press that down, that comes on. I only have that one switch hooked up, so that's the only one that'll work. On the other side over here, these digital outputs, that's to turn something on or off. Uh, you'll see when I check this box down here on my webcam right here, you'll see those lights come on. So there I'm turning on a light, turning off the light, turning on a light, turning off, 
turn it on, turn it off. So I've got three little lights hooked up to that one. So that's how you can control things on and off. Now, the way you turn that on or you set that up, so let's say um, in attract mode, I want to use a physical button to turn my photo booth on or off to start the session instead of touching the screen. So I could come down here and go to booth command. I could uh, choose start session and um, then I want to <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to, uh, when that happens, when I press that button, it would start the session. Okay? So you could use that instead. So let's say that you want to do, um, use a fidget to turn on, like for example, we did this at Photo Booth Expo. We had a, a fidget that was turning on the 360 uh, platform, and we had a different fidget that was uh, turning on the lights. So if you go down here, in that case, what I did was with the start, <clears throat> excuse me, start of a session, I clicked um, choose my device. In this case, it was this fidget. And uh, let's choose number one. And I want to turn it on. Okay. Now you can set how long it's on by setting timed or just untimed. It'll stay on until you turn it off. So there... I would turn it on. So if I go here, again, I'm going to choose my fidget, the output. I'm going to turn it on and untimed. Okay. And I'm going to click add. And on. Okay. So there we go. Now what that's going to do is when I start the session, it's going to turn that light on. All right. Now then, depending on how you want that to work, possibly the end instructions, you would do just the opposite. Okay, I'm going to turn it off now. So choose my fidget, the output, turn it off, and there. So the fidget would turn it on, the fidget would turn it off. So you see how simple that is to just choose when you want something to come on and off. Now you can use fidgets for a lot of different things. Almost anything electrical you could use one to turn it on and off. Uh, so there's a variety of things you can use a fidget for. Again, seek out advice of an electrician because I don't want to get blamed for you electrocuting yourself. Okay? Well, all right, folks. I hope you enjoyed this and you learned something from it. We're going to keep doing these tomorrow. I'm going to be doing one on Event Gallery tomorrow morning uh, at 10 o'clock Central Time. And with Event Gallery, you will uh, learn how to uh, use that in, to your advantage to boost your business and to uh, distribute the electronic imaging, especially uh, large things like slow motion videos and so on, effectively to people. All right. Have a good evening. Y'all stay safe.